against Bitcoin. It's going up forever. You're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom. Because they expect well, because they want to sell it eventually, desirable. Michael. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the people who are, uh, yes, sure, some people pass it on to their children. But, like, most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets at a profit. So let, I me, get, let me say it a different way. Okay. People that use fiat currency as a store of value, there's a name for them. We call them poor. Yo, welcome to another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live, your number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution, car breaking news, culture, dramatic warfare. We will be your guide through the separation of money and state. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Simply Bitcoin, the most watched daily Bitcoin live show on YouTube, Rumble, and X. Sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. We have a lot of topics to cover today, specifically the ETF in Hong Kong has been, has been given the initial approval. I put it in the China, I put it in the title though, uh, Basically, the Chinese ETF has been approved. Why do I say that? Well, we've been covering this for quite a while. We've pulled out the receipts. We've shown you the Bloomberg article. And we'll even dive into what the specific, uh, which company uh, got the approval. And guess where this company is based out of? Beijing, right? So I believe that they're using Hong Kong really as a proxy for a Chinese ETF. And of course, here in the US, the BlackRock ETF, uh, and all the other ones, the vast majority of them are custodied with Coinbase, makes it extre extremely easy for the U.S. government to just, you know, snap their fingers, 6102 order 2.0. Uh, that functions as the American ETFs, right? So we're going to dive into all of that. Also, a couple other topics we wanted to cover is the geopolitical risks, right? You know, a lot of people, it's, they saw that, right? The 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 the, it seems like the crisis in Israel is is escalating. We had a huge price dump because of that. And of course, uh, we've been here before in terms of Bitcoin's history. And these price dumps create some of the best buying opportunities, right? It gives you Bitcoin at a 10%, 20%, 30% discount, depending on the cycle. So really excited to go into all of that. And of course, you guys know, I love to talk about the Overton window and how it's slowly shifting. Well, uh, there was a kind of a big MMA fight over the weekend, and it seems like one of the one of the winners in his in his victory speech, he was talking about Austrian economics. And if you want to save your country, you know he should, <laughs> he loves the Second Amendment, freedom of speech, Austrian economics. So again, uh, that I think is another indication of the Overton window shifting. Uh, another representation of that, of course, is the first libertarian president to ever get elected. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about Javier Malay in Argentina. So yes, the Overton window is definitely shifting. I think that's due to the internet. I think the internet is empowering people in two ways. It allows them to do their own research, consume the information they want to consume. And way number two, but this only applies if you take self-custody, it allows you to... Um, it allows you to choose which money you want to use. And I was actually, and I've literally read and listened to this book at least 10 times and I'm still not sick of it, but I was listening to the uh, Sovereign Individual audiobook on the way back from Texas yesterday. And it just seems like all of this is playing out, right? The great disintermediation of information, the great disintermediation of money. And uh, if you're positioned correctly, you, you know, I think it's going to, we as a society, as human civilization is going to enter an era of freedom, the likes of which I don't think we've ever seen before. And I'm extremely optimistic about it. So speaking of optimism, uh, bring up my legendary co-host who is optimistic today. He has a giant smile on his face and he's wearing the conservative progressive libertarian Bitcoiner shirt, which is absolutely pat badass. Uh, how you doing, Opti? I am doing wonderful, guys, but my, I think I did lose my voice, so my, my voice is a little rough today. We had a long week, uh, you know, a six-day work week this week, Nico, but hey, it was all for the culture. It was, all, it was all to, you know, continue to spread the Bitcoin signal. Shouts out to every single person that showed us love in Dallas. It, it really means a lot to us. You know, the amount of people that came up to us and were like, man, we love what you're doing. Continue to do it. It really, really means a lot to us. And shouts out to every single person that we were hanging out with. It's it's so awesome to hang out with Bitcoiners. And and at this point, some people that I consider family, not just friends or, you know, fans out there, like you guys are family. 
appreciate you guys coming up to us and showing us love. It really means a lot. But before we go on, Nico, I do want to comment on one of these questions or the, these comments in the chat. Shouts out the Briggs. Uh, Bitcoin doesn't crash. It just goes on sale. You know, it, it's amazing that Bitcoin's already back at this price. It would drop to, what, 60K. We're back at 65K. It's almost like nothing happened over the week. And it's almost like the Bitcoin world just keeps chugging along and we're like life's so much better on the Bitcoin standard. Anyways, let's bring in our boy today because I had a great time with Adam from Bitcoin. Well, it was a it was a great time, bro. How you doing? Bless up, fam. It's straight gas here with my besties. You know, this is lit fire, bro. Fire. Dude, what, the <laughs> what the hell are you saying, man? You know, man, <laughs> when you spend. When you spend three or four days with Opti, you just kind of, you just kind of end up talking like a, like a Valley Girl Zoomer, you know. And and I think it maybe rubbed off on me a little bit too much. So I, maybe I'm happy to be back in Canada and just a little bit of space so I can I can think a bit normally again. <laughs> yeah, guys, you you should have saw this bus. It was all of us like leaving, and it was Nico, me, Adam, Isa, you know, the Bitcoin Well Boys. And we were literally learning how to speak Zoomer. Everyone's making fun of me because I speak in Zoomer. And uh, I was teaching them the ways, guys. I was teaching them the ways. Bet. Yo, for Loco show, TX, for show. Good to meet you too, man. That was a fun week. I, and Opti, just like on what you said, man, it was so nice meeting people and seeing people and just saying hey to everyone and, you know, getting the feedback. And it's been it's been really encouraging. So, uh, yeah, great to meet everyone and was super stoked to to be able to hang and in Texas. Bet for show for show. Anyways, uh, lesson. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, what's the fake one? This weekend was clipped. Uh, it's clipped. <laughs> what I, I realized, what I've realized this weekend is that Opti literally has a soundboard. Um, Opti, I, I only speak in memes, guys. Sorry, not sorry. Opti literally has a soundboard of like, I think like 20 responses and now Everything. that he pointed it out i'm like oh wow so i've just been talking to a soundboard um which look is jose cuervo gets it no cap on god we <laughs> bless it Yo, that's Anyways, a clip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm gonna keep starting with the michael sailor uh intro until opti puts it on the soundboard which is why i did it um, okay, I, I, yeah, I'll do that. So anyways, <laughs> it's going to be a great show. Uh, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. Well, we're going to talk about the importance of self-custody. We have a Reddit post for you guys as well, which I think is like a very sinister warning of where I think this is going. And again, I can't emphasize, guys, if you have not read the book, The Sovereign Individual, like what they predicted is like playing out in real time. And again, like if you kind of like, you know, look gaze into the future because of how much Bitcoin is going to change uh, the relationship between the individual and the state, the state is going to fight back in a way. Right. And this isn't a kinetic war. It's going to be an information war. It's going to be a war for winning over the hearts and minds of individuals. But they're going to try to keep as many people as possible in the existing system, because if they don't. Uh, that system can't stand up on its own two feet, right? They need people within the system for the system to function like it functions, right? So we're going to talk about the importance of self-custody. Uh, of course, Bitcoin, well, automatic self-custody by default. Uh, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to dive deep into all those subjects. All right, no more delay. Let's start the show. But before we do that, I do want to give a very special shout out. And of course, I just mentioned them too. Bitcoin Well. Bitcoin Well is the best place to build your automatic self-custody Bitcoin stack. It's a publicly traded company coming out of Canada that recently expanded to all 50 states. That's right. It's self-custody by default, which perfectly aligns with the Simply Bitcoin ethos of the separation of money and state. What is self-custody by default? You can't buy Bitcoin on Bitcoin Well unless you're going to take self-custody. And after all, self-custody is a revolution. Visit Bitcoin well.com slash simply Bitcoin today. Don't go to bitcoinwell.com slash BTC sessions. And I also want to uh, give a uh, shout out to the Bitcoin jackpot contest, which is currently
be live. I believe we're definitely going to hit 5 million, 5 million sats. Uh, and the winner is going to be announced uh, during the having. The way that you enter is you go to bitcoinwell.com slash contest. Uh, you sign up to the platform. If you're an existing user, you go to the reward section. Every time you buy Bitcoin, you earn points and you could point those points towards the Bitcoin jackpot contest. And that gives you an opportunity to win a nice little Bitcoin jackpot of 5 million Satoshis. Anyways, uh, Wait, Nico, also- 10, 10 million sats still in play, right, Adam? Yo, we actually, I'm just looking right now because I'm looking at this right now, realizing I forgot to update it over the weekend. We're at 5 mil. So 5 million, 592,000 sats in the jackpot. Winners taking home 69% of that. And real quick, just because we're plugging in, I guess I'm doing my own ad reads now, so I don't know what the hell I pay you guys for. <laughs> but <laughs> There is a, a poll on the Bitcoin Well Twitter and because uh, we're doing a partnership with Geyser. And so... A geyser project is getting 10% of that jackpot. So over 500K sats going to a geyser project. Uh, there's three wicked projects to choose from. So go uh, vote on the poll on the Bitcoin Well Twitter. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, guys. You can go follow the Bitcoin Well Twitter at the Bitcoin Well. And uh, you could follow Adam O'Brien. Uh, Adam O'Brien underscore on Twitter as well. Adam's been uh, dropping some, some hot fire. Anyways. All right, everybody. Let's get to numbers. We have a lot to talk about the bitcoin numbers is your bitcoin in cold storage really secure is your seed phrase really secure stamp seeds do it yourself kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper don't store your generational wealth on paper Paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamped seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive and time proof. All things that paper is not allowing you to hodl your bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul stamp your seed on stamp seed all right ladies and gentlemen at the time of recording the bitcoin price is 64k flat sats per dollar 1563 satoshis per dollar block height 839,000 362 having estimate april 19 2024 speaking of that ladies and gentlemen opti will be holding it down thursday and friday because i will be in nashville tennessee for the bitcoin magazine having live stream just to give you guys a heads up total lightning network capacity 4376 bitcoin capacity value 280 million us dollars realized monetary inflation 1.73 percent the market capitalization is 1.62 trillion bitcoin versus gold Bitcoin versus gold market cap, 9.11%. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to what happened over the weekend. You guys love that I'd like to talk about the Overton window, but so does John Vass and so does Elon Musk. And I'll get that. I'll get to that in a second. So what happened? So at UFC 300, which uh, we actually got to see a little bit of, Opti, Adam and I, we went to... Uh, we went to a very family because friendly new wholesome bar. F- family friendly <laughs> we went, restaurant. We, we went to a family friendly wholesome bar and uh we we saw the fight and what that knockout was absolutely crazy. Anyway, anyways, here is one of the winners uh for us to say, and of course he was talking to Joe Rogan, so uh let's let's check it out. I love private property and let me tell you something. If you care about your fucking country, I'll read Ludwig von Mises and the six lessons. Of the Austrian economic school, motherfuckers. I love- <laughs> so, and then before that, he's like, I love the Second Amendment. I like to own guns. I like private property, you know. And then, of course, he's touting Austrian economics. And Brazil is going through a very kind of tumultuous uh, political situation, right? We, we read you guys about the Twitter files, about how a Supreme Court judge in Brazil is putting pressure on Twitter to uh, suppress certain voices, censor certain voices. And I think it all just comes down to, you know, really like there's two options, right? There's the free market, a non-coercive way for society to kind of organize its, itself. And then there's this like top-down, centralized kind of approach 
and it always ends badly. But I, I guess people still haven't woken up. Like still, people are still trying the same thing and expecting different results. Anyways, here's Tur de Meester, uh, and he says many saw uh, Moicano's epic MMA speech. The six lessons have a fascinating backstory linking Argentina's history with its current president. The story starts in 1959, a time when Argentina was on a crossroads of uh, a crossroads of remaining on the socialist path of then exiled President Juan Perón or returning to the classical liberalism it had been famous for until the 1940. Lug Juan Mises, a 70-year-old professor, one of the Europe's last free market intellectuals who left his native Austria to flee the Nazi regime and who by then found a safe home in the United States, receives an invitation. It's a letter from Argentina sent to him by a Mr. Alberto B. B. Benegas Lynch from the Center for the Promotion of the Free Economy in Buenos Aires, inviting him to come give a series of lectures. Mrs. agrees, and the what well, that I that word is nuts. Sib, what the hell is that, Opti? Septenguer. Sept. I can't even say it. Adam, you want to take a crack at that? For real, for real. That's bussin'. <laughs> okay, uh, Mises agrees. <laughs> and basically, <laughs> boomer. Yeah, basically boomer and then and, and zoomer lingo. I have no <laughs> idea what that word means, so I'm just going to skip it and say Mrs. agrees and makes the 5,000 mile journey south. He gives his lectures in English with the audience given access to headsets with simultaneous translation into Spanish and Mises characteristically bold and precise style. He contrasts capitalism and socialism and talks about the dangers of inflation and interventionalism. Fast forward to 60 years later, outsider Javier Malay is running for president. At some point during his career as an economist, Malay discovered Austrian econom economics and completely fell in love with it. His message of free and open markets resonates especially with the disenfranchised and impoverished use of Argentina. Again and again, the heavily sideburned maverick repeats the, uh, the watchword of his campaign, classical liberalism, as well as its definition coined by, the, uh, by an Argentine free market economist greatly admired by Malay, quote, liberalism is the unrestricted respect for the life project of others based on the principle of non-aggression and the defense uh, the defense of the right to life, liberty, and private property. Who is this free market economist so off-coded by Malay, the one who appeared on stage with him celebrating his surprise election? It is Alberto Benegas. Holy cow, how that, that made full circle. It is Alberto Benegas Lynch Jr., the son and namesake of the man who invited Lug Ludwig von Mises to deliver six, le six lectures in Buenos Aires 60 years ago. Uh, here's a quote. I consider it a very good sign that while 50 years ago, practically no Nobody in the world had the courage to say anything in favor of a free uh, economy we have now, at least in some of the advanced countries of the world, institutions that are centers of the propagation of free economy, such as, for example, the Central and Buenos Aires. So, I mean, yes, this is this is why I keep, you know, banging the drum on the shift of the Overton window. The fact that, you know, this this fight was watched by a lot of people, right? Uh, the fact that it's an MMA fighter himself talking about you know the the awesome you know austrian school of economics tells me that we're heading in the right direction the fact that javier malay uh you know gave a speech at the cantillonaire conference also known as the world economic forum and he literally said that money printing is a form of uh, a form a, 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 a mechanism in which you can control people tells me that again the overton window is shifting right you had john vallis saying the same thing and if you still don't believe me, let's take a look at Google Trends. This thing absolutely skyrocketed. People are asking, who is Ludwig von Mises, right? And then this leads me to, of course, Elon Musk. You know, Elon Musk freed the bird. He bought Twitter. You know, he's supporting free speech as much as he can, right? Of course, we're friends of Noster. I think you can't really censor a protocol. You know, a centralized platform is a different story. But hey, it's a step in the right direction. And he says, the refreshing breeze of the Overton window opening. I completely agree. And I think all of this, like a couple thoughts, and then I'll pass it on to Opti and Adam. So thought number one is, I don't think... Austrian economics is possible without Bitcoin. Uh, I think inevitably the state captures money, money becomes political, and it funds, you know, kind of these collectivist ideologies. I actually uh, tweeted out uh, a couple days, I think it was like a week ago or so, and it just like it came original thought, like one in the morning or something like that. And I was like, fiat fuels collectivism. Well, to be precise, I said fiat fuels socialism, Bitcoin starves it. Right. 
Uh, if you don't believe me, the fifth tenet in the Communist Manifesto is the necessity for the centralization of credit, the necessity for the centralization, the, the necessity for a central bank, really. So, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I, I, this is awesome because more people are waking up to this. More people are coming to the realization that there is an alternative. There is an alternative way. And uh, I think uh, all roads lead to Bitcoin, right? If you really support Austrian economics and you don't support Bitcoin or if, you know, you support freedom and you don't support Bitcoin, it's because you don't really understand Bitcoin. But Bitcoin is the only tool that, you know, can realize that dream and that hope of that society that you want to live in. So that's my take uh, for real, for real bet. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Adam and then Opti. Man, I had two thoughts about this. The first one, or the first take that I like, this wasn't my thought, but someone tweeted, a quote, quote posted that and said, this is so based that I thought a Bitcoiner, AI, thumbs up, AI dubbed it because it is so on point. And I totally agree. I think it's amazing how, like this guy is not outspoken about being a Bitcoiner. I have no idea if he owns Bitcoin, um, but it's incredible how Bitcoin is the undertone to these types of beliefs, this type of ideology, and this type of, of desire for prosperity in an economy and, and in a country and in a planet. And so I love it. I think it's fantastic. Also, what I was, what I was thinking about is that it's so sad that this type of language would be damning in any other sports organization. You don't see, you know, somebody lifting up the Stanley Cup, getting a an award, and then and then you know talking about the importance of 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 free speech. You don't see somebody winning the Super Bowl. It's all just the templated answers. You know, get in the corporate, stay within the corporate lines. Uh, don't talk out about anything. Uh, shut up and dribble is another uh, thing that we saw. And our organizations, our corporate organizations are censoring, censoring, censoring. So now we've gone from the media is censored, has been for 40 years, and that's kind of coming up or coming alive. The medical industry has been censored, and this is now coming out and has been for the last five years. Our sports organizations are being censored. Like, where does it end? At what point? We've got schools. Like, everything is just uh, being held hostage by this censorship. And I think it's so awesome that Dana has kind of let his, his fighters – you know, speak their minds. And, uh, I also think it's quite hilarious that, uh, we witnessed these guys like getting concussed for 15 minutes. And then we put them on the mic in front of like 20,000 people. I think that's beautiful. We get the most raw thought, <laughs> like the very, very basic thought, uh, for a couple seconds, Joe Rogan's an absolute genius for, for doing that. But I think it's awesome. And I saw, um, an interview of a reporter, um, interviewing Dana and it just hits home so well the state of journalism and the state of media. The reporter asked Dana, he says, um, hey, it looks like you give your fighters quite a long leash for speaking their minds. And Dana's like, what? I don't give them a leash. He's like, I'm not their owner. They're not dogs. I don't tell them what they can and cannot say. They just speak what they want and they know they can do that. And it's so shocking that the journalist is like, oh, wow, this guy owns the fighter. And therefore, he dictates what he says. This is the state of the acceptable media in the world. And we know that Bitcoin is a representation of our time, of our thoughts, and of our efforts. When, when your free speech is taken into consideration, when your free speech is neglected, then uh, effectively the entirety of your value shrinks and decreases. It's incredibly fiat. And I think it's it's just incredible to see, I mean, we the Overton window moving and shifting, I hope that more sports organizations see the positive response because look at like the UFC is blowing up. They are getting more popular, growing faster than any other sport um, on the planet right now. UFC 300 was obviously a wicked card, but it's, I think it's going to start to shift. It feels like we are now being rewarded or there is rewards coming in this, in the sense of views, advertising dollars, like the UFC is not losing any sponsors after that. Right. And that's a good thing. We saw Bud Light have the opposite decision and the opposite reaction where they lost a ton of money for being too woke. Here we have the UFC getting pretty based and they're gaining money. And so this feels like a positive thing in my mind. A hundred percent. I totally agree with that. It's definitely a step in the right direction. The Overton window is shifting. It really <laughs> is. Anyways, uh, bet for show for show. Opti. Dude, just stop using it. You can't use it correctly. I'll have to give bet. you some Zoomer lingo lessons. Yeah, we, need, we need classes. We need, we need lessons with Opti. 
Zoomer yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. You guys are butchering the memes. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, to Adam's point, though, you were wondering whether he's a Bitcoiner or not. He did tweet out that he wants his bonus in Bitcoin. So Yo. whether, like you were saying, he's an overt Bitcoiner or whether he's just stacking sat silently, I think it all goes to the same thing we always say. All roads lead to Bitcoin. And if you start studying Austrian economics, you start to understand that it's all about the money and our money is broken. It's, you know, the, the U.S. dollar currency, all fiat currencies in the world are absolutely destroyed. And people are waking up to the fact that you can barely survive on a fiat standard. You can barely survive if you're only saving fiat currencies. Hence why Nico started the show with the sailor meme. If you save in dollars, we call them poor because you can't save in dollars. You, you can't get ahead if you are saving in dollars. And I think that signal is spreading. And again, to your point, though, I, I'd venture to guess that millions of people watch this fight. Of course, people were drinking. Obviously, they you know, were cheering. They're having a good time. So they might have missed that little portion of the fight. But there are people out there that caught that. And whether they you know, ran outside and bought Bitcoin, uh, planting these seeds of independence, of freedom, of understanding that capitalism isn't the problem here, that property rights are important, that if you are a patriot that you do if you do love your country then you have to understand where the root of the problems come and it's because the money is broken it is because of the perpetual war machine it's because they can print more money that we're seeing the 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 west fall basically for lack of better terms it is because they are destroying the money that we are in this position right now and i also do believe that it does feel like the Overton window is shifting. I know you guys are getting your tomatoes ready, but I've been seeing this pendulum swing for a while for, you know, like uh, Adam was saying, we had that whole Bud Light sh uh, debacle where the companies have gone woke. And, we, you know, we, in Bitcoin, we always say, if you go woke, you go broke. Where we're seeing that the pendulum is swinging the other way. That now it's gone so far one way that people are tired of this. They're, they're, they're tired of the thought police. They're tired of the speech police and they're looking for alternatives and say what you want about UFC. You know, people could very well make the point that it's bread and circuses and keep them distracted and literally gladiators out there fighting like it was in the Roman empire. But it's kind of a meme that I've seen go around on Twitter that we are starting to enter the era of the warrior scholar. So like maybe this guy is like me, an 80 IQ person, but he hit the signal. Yeah, he's out there literally like Adam was saying, you know, putting brain damage and concussing himself. And yet he comes out and he's like, look, bros, study Austrian economics, study reality, because this is how we get out of this situation. It's all about the money. And I, I fundamentally believe in the idea of the warrior scholar out there. It is not enough to just be smart. It's not enough to just be jacked. You have to be jacked and smart. And look, I know we're not not all looking out at, at UFC fighters as like the epitome of, of intellect, but this guy is on signal. This guy's out there putting his body on the line. He's fit physically, and it seems like he's fit mentally because he understands the true nature of reality. He understands that Austrian economics is rooted in reality, and if you want to prosper, you have to understand how the world really works. And really, if you compare the UFC fighter, who most people wouldn't listen twice to about anything he's saying it's just like shut up bro go fight you know get, let me let me see you kill yourself and i'll get my kicks that way but if you compare that to what the the credentialist academic class is saying on television about economics and money it's a stark contrast where this guy's out here he's a fighter and yet he understands economics better than say you know ross sorkin on uh the what's the msnbc or he understands economics better than the people that are supposedly supposed to understand economics better with their phd economic degrees and this guy's like look bro study austrian economics your life will get better he's like pay me in bitcoin and i mean this also kind of goes into i saw on bitcoin mag that uh uh, the Saints um, defensive captain, I think he's a middle linebacker. He's also going to do the Oaken strategy of like, I'm putting my NFL contract in Bitcoin because you can't save in dollars. And we're starting to see that more people are waking up to the true nature go of the world right now. It's your money is broken. You need to find an alternative. You need to save in something that cannot be debased. And hey, if that signal is being spread by UFC gladiators, then 
they're going to hit the right market. Like I say it all the time, the right market is that 25, you know, or rather 18 to 40 year old male out there. Cause that's the only demographic that has ever actually changed anything in the course of history. It's the military fighting age male out there that actually changes the course of humanity and who else, but the UFC is that audience. So if only a small fraction of people heard this, got their first touch on Austrian economics and even Bitcoin. This is a good thing. You are seeing that the Overton window is shifting. You're seeing that the the thought police bubble is crashing. And we're going to be continue to see more and more and more of this. So, man, legacy media is absolutely torched. People are getting the signal from UFC fighters and independent content creators. And, man, just it, I just get so hyped, especially after that fight. I don't know if you guys watched it, but the one fight we watched was a battle. It was it was epic. Uh, man, just absolutely awesome to see. I have some bars. Give, I don't have the bars thing. On yeah, my, on listen. My board. That's called motherfucking bars. Bet for show for show. Anyways, guys, if you are enjoying the show right now, there's about thousand there's about a thousand of you guys watching live between YouTube, Rumble, and X. Make sure to smash the like button. Really, really helps uh push our content forward. We have about 89 likes. Help us break a hundred likes within the first 35 minutes of the show. I think we could definitely do that. And uh yeah, guys, sit back, relax. We still got a lot to cover. Anyways, let's jump straight into the news. We have a lot to talk about today, like the Hong Kong stuff. Let's check it out. Here we go. The Daily News. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with a UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the passport link in the show notes below to learn more. Oh, sorry. Is the show back? I was playing snake on my passport by foundation devices. That's right. You can play snake on this. You could also take self custody of your Bitcoin. That's probably more important. Remember guys, not your keys, not your cheese. It's absolutely beautiful, completely open source, ex completely open source, extremely easy to use. And you can pair it up with the Envoy app. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's so easy to take self custody. You absolutely have no excuse. Remember guys, not your keys, not your cheese, empower yourself, to become a sovereign individual. And you do that by taking self custody. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about this. Okay. Because everyone is saying Hong Kong launched the ETF, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Hong Kong is part of China and if you guys watch the Hong Kong protests, they just completely crack down on free speech. You know, it's supposed to be uh, one country, two systems. Uh, but no, anything that happens in Hong Kong needs to get approval from Beijing. Yes, that's right. It needs to get approval from the CCP. Now, what's really interesting about the CCP is that they banned Bitcoin mining within their borders. And of course, that caused the hash rate to drop like 50 percent. That coincidentally was happening during Bitcoin's, uh, you know, last uh, cycle uh, cycle boom. And I, I believe that's one of the reasons actually that we didn't hit 100K because of the hash rate drop and all those miners had to sell Bitcoin to relocate some more favorable jurisdictions. It's just funny how Bitcoin's incentives work and even a totalitarian country that's trying to roll out a central bank digital currency for their population is trying to benefit from number go up. And if the United States has an ETF rolled out and China is a competitor of the United States, what they're using is they're using Hong Kong as a proxy to launch an ETF there without launching the ETF in the mainland, right? Here's a Bloomberg article. We've referenced it many times. It came out in February, February 21 of 2023. It said Hong Kong's crypto hub ambitions when quiet backing from Beijing. It goes on to say, uh, representatives from China's liaison office and other officials have been frequent guests at the city's crypto gatherings over the past months. Swapping business cards, WeChat details, said people familiar with the matter, 
who asked not to be named discussing private information. The encounters have been friendly with officials checking in on developments, asking for reports, and in some cases making up follow-up calls, the people said. Okay, so all that being said, fast forward about a year or so later, April 15, 2024, so today, Hong Kong gives initial Bitcoin Ether ETF nod. Again, say Hong Kong, but if you take a look at the company, right, Harvest Global, They're based out of where? Beijing, China. They also have $230 billion assets under management. It's a lot of money that could potentially be flowing into Bitcoin once again. So let's let's take a look at some of the details in regards to the ETF approval. They say Hong Kong, but I'm really looking at this and I'm like, okay, this is a Chinese ETF, right? They're using Hong Kong as like kind of like this like isolated, you know, uh, isolated area so that the mainland people in mainland don't really benefit from NGU, but they could, the government of China doesn't get left behind by the U S and other countries that are benefiting from from NGU. Anyways, goes on to say Hong Kong gave conditional approvals for asset managers to start spot Bitcoin and ether exchange traded funds. The firm said a development that boosted both tokens and the wider crypto market. Harvest Global Investments LTD and a partnership between Hashkey Capital and Borzia Asset Management uh, Management announced initial approvers, approvals in separate statements on Monday. The Hong Kong unit of China Asset Management said it had received approval from the city's Security and Exchange Commission for the proposal of virtual asset management services and is deploying resources to develop. Uh, products. Hong Kong is vying with the likes of Singapore and Dubai to become a digital asset hub after rolling out a dedicated regulatory regime last year. Officials are trying to restore the city's reputation as a modern financial hub following a crackdown on dissent that dulled its allure. Anyways, so a couple things. Do you think that it's a neat, that it's a coincidence that a Chinese ETF is approved two to three months after the ETF approval in the United States. That is not a coincidence whatsoever. Incentives. Here's Samson Mao. I think he had a great uh, take on this. The Hong Kong Bitcoin ETFs will feature in-kind creation and redemption. This is a move to one-up the US ETFs. The race is on to accumulate BTC in Asia. So yeah, I mean, it, Bitcoin's incentives stay winning. Like no one can resist this thing. And I I just can't help but to think of this article that Alex Gladstein uh wrote uh called Bitcoin is the Trojan horse for freedom. And in that article he made the case how NGU and FGU number go up technology and freedom uh, go up technology are inextricably linked. You cannot disconnect them, right? So once you let that Trojan horse in, it's really kind of like this like one way street. However, all that being said, at the end of the day, the ETFs, it's paper Bitcoin. You, you just, you're, not, you're it's captured Bitcoin. Let's stop calling it paper Bitcoin. It's captured Bitcoin. Really, you should be buying spot Bitcoin, but I think it's a step in the right direction because it moves the Overton window. It further legitimizes Bitcoin in the eyes of, of uh, uh, institutional investors the uh the 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 markets all around the world and again i think once people come to re the realization that okay spot bitcoin i don't need to pay a fee there's not there's no custody risk i don't have to ask anybody for permission right or you know etf bitcoin where i have to pay a fee and there is a there is a custody risk i think eventually as time progresses and I think it's inevitable that one government is going to 6102 this. Like, I think it's inevitable. And I think when that happens, like, <laughs> you're just going to see this giant migration of people into self-custody. I think it's inevitable. But anyways, that's my take on this. It's a really promising development for number go up. But from a revolutionary aspect, I just want to remind everyone, you know, I think we're going to rip over the next 12 to 18 months. I think it's really important to remember that if it's not your keys, it's not your Bitcoin. Right. It's really important to remember that. And uh, it's really important to spread that message as well. What 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 I've noticed, and of course, not all boomers are like this, but what I've noticed is that, you know, if you're older, you put a lot of faith into uh, you put a lot of faith into outsourcing the custody of your wealth. And I think this is an educational thing. This is this uh, this is a lot of work that we have to do on our part to really wake people up to the reality 
of the benefits of self-custody and all of that. Anyways, I saw Lightning Goats in the chat, and I do want to give him a shout out because he did open source Opti's Taco Feeder. That's right. You can go to the GitHub right now. You could download Opti's Taco, Taco Feeder. I tried to pitch Opti on the idea, and he literally spit in my face. So I don't think it's going to happen, but... Uh, no, 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 no. Nika wants me, like, in a room with, like... I, I forget what he was saying. He was, like, mariachi hat and music, like, eating tacos. I'm like, that's never going no, to no, happen. No, 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 that's not, that's not... Look, and by the way, like, just so you know, like, you know, if it gets views, I will do the same thing, but with Arepas <laughs> and Venezuelan music, okay? <laughs> so this isn't just an opti thing but no but i think it'd be hilarious like if there was like a little qr code and like opti's like you know what i don't I'm, how, I'm how thinking, does it work like these spences, no, these no, no, no. Tacos. It's, it's not gonna it's not gonna be like that we're gonna we're gonna take it up a notch okay so you're gonna sit in the middle of a chair in the middle of a room okay and you know you, you're dressing whatever you want and when people hit the certain amount of bitcoin on you know on the qr code confetti is going to go out my mariachi band's going to come out and then like uh because opti i know you like this an attractive girl with a plate is going to come out with a taco okay i'm in and they're going to take it to you and then boom right uh but you might have to sit on that live stream for a while but i think it'd be absolutely hilarious if we did that okay so all right all right well I'm we'll, just saying, we'll, we'll we'll game plan this I'm just saying, I think it'd be, I, we have to make it happen. I'm just saying this, this would be great content. Anyways, Adam, what's your take on this? Uh, you know, as the CEO of a publicly traded company uh, coming out of Canada, what's your take on the Chinese ETFs? I'm saying it, I'm saying it because that's really what it is. <laughs> Yo, I actually had my take on the taco machine uh, prepped up. So I guess I'll just skip that one and then and we'll move straight into <laughs> Chinese uh, ETFs. Listen. This goes one of two ways, and it's and it's the same one of two ways that that the that, that the American ETF goes into. It's like this is either a gateway into self custody, or it is a prevention towards self custody. And honestly, the like pessimist in me feels like it's the latter. I don't feel. I feel like people tell me they bought Bitcoin, and what they meant was they bought an ETF. And that pains my soul because that ETF has tax consequences. It has inheritance consequences. It has um, uh, movability consequences. Nobody was able to sell their ETF during the flash crash on Saturday. Like there are just so many consequences, it has fee consequences, centralization consequences. And we are living in such a fragile geopolitical state across the world that people think when they own you know, I like what you said, captured Bitcoin. People think they own Bitcoin and really they just have price exposure. They have no freedom exposure. And we all know that self-custody is the only way to get freedom exposure. Here in Canada, like, and I think we're going to talk about it in a little bit, we literally have banks either preventing or harassing people who want to withdraw money out of their bank account. I personally am debanked from all six major banks in Canada. I have a tiny credit union to my name only because I run a publicly traded company and we like negotiated that into the, the contract with, with the bank is that like the CEO gets a checking account, right? Like it is so bad up here. We are so centralized, so captured with our money. And by the way, two of those six banks have a JV that made the like most popular payment rail here in Canada called Interact eTransfer. Like it is very, very bad when we look at the way that the money can be captured and then prevented. I saw a tweet somewhere say, um, this is actually how rich guys are going to get their money out of China. No, it's not because the money is going to be locked in China. If they were buying real Bitcoin, yes, 100%, it would be a way for them to get their money, take their money, put it on, you know, in a passport, put it into a metal plate seed phrase, and then take off. That would be absolutely a possibility. If it's locked, in some Hong Kong ETF, it's going to be exposed to the same rules that the money that's locked in the Hong Kong bank account is. It is not a good way for uh, people to buy Bitcoin. Yes, the institutional exposure is fine. I know there's like um, a lot of debate about that. Frankly, my belief is that I want NGD. I don't want number to go up in my lifetime. This is a no there's no questions asked numbers going up just because supply and demand economics is math. But like 
the same, like right now, we are in this incredible spring, summer season. The birds are chirping. The flowers are beautiful. When Bitcoin is going to get like really, really expensive and it's going to be difficult to stack and it's all captured in there, that's like the winter. That's like you're not able to stack as much. You're, you're not able to do as much um, with the money because you're not able to save into the future as well. And so I don't know that we want Wall Street buying hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin. And I don't know that we want Hong Kong buying hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin. Um, all it does is make Bitcoin more expensive. It makes your time worth less sats. And that is the nature of deflationary um, uh, assets. And I get that, but it feels like it's getting manipulated and it feels like it's not a true economic state, a true free market economic state that's making it possible. So maybe I'm a little bit like uh, jaded. Um, I don't like that, that, you know, everyone is, is cheering on the fact that people are getting exposed to Bitcoin through like paper and captured Bitcoin. It just, I hope that we have enough educators out there and it's you, it's the audience, the educators out there that, you know, tell them, Hey, that's great. Now sell your ETF. Like you like Bitcoin. Cool. Sell your ETF, get a hardware wallet. Let's buy some real Bitcoin at bitcoinwallet.com and actually get it into self custody, into freedom money. Amen to that. Bet for show, for show. Opti. What's for, your real, take? for real, for oh. real. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my, my, my millennial boomerness couldn't help but to change it already. All right. Uh, Opti, what's your take on this? Adam dropping the hot fire like always. Yeah, so I'll first start with the the China China takes and stuff like, look, guys, I'm not going to pretend to admit to you that I know what's going on in China. I can only really see what's happening on the surface, what's what, what we're seeing from reports. But it is very interesting that we're seemingly seeing Hong Kong be used as a proxy for Bitcoin in China. And shouts out to Lars in the comment. He, he commented chat in the chat. He said, uh, China banned your Bitcoins that they're buying. And I, I just think that's hilarious especially considering all the stuff we're seeing coming out of the u.s you know we're seeing the politicians and the central bankers and and the even some institutions basically say that like oh we need to ban bitcoin we need to stop bitcoin proliferating in the states we've seen choke point 2.0 we we've seen all of the stuff you know self-hosted or unhosted wallets and all that so i just find it interesting that we're seeing china basically backtrack on their bitcoin mining ban and and i just find it hilarious that we're still seeing seeing people in the US or even in the UK that they think they can stop Bitcoin. And it's what we say all the time here on the show. Like you can't ban Bitcoin. You can only ban yourself from Bitcoin. And any government or institution that actively comes out against Bitcoin one just exposes themselves as the tyrannical control freaks that they are and two expose themselves to the fact that they really don't understand what the game is or rather they're trying to gaslight the people out there into believing that bitcoin can actually be stopped hence why we come out here every single day hence why you guys do your best to try to orange pill and freedom pill your friends and family because for better or worse guys the only way to really gain freedom is to take bitcoin into custody this is the facts of the matter and so just commenting on the China news, it's, it's just beautiful to see that the game theory is playing out in real time. And this is only going to increase. I'm sure, like Adam was saying and Nika was saying, we will see the price respond to this and we will see the game theory play out in real time. And this will happen not only on the individual level, but it's going to start happening on a nation state level. It's happening on an institutional level. And I guess this is the PSA moment where I said, guys, don't sell them your Bitcoin. Make sure you are hodling your Bitcoin in self custody. Make sure they're backed up. Make sure you're 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 uh, you know safe going into this transition. But there was a point, Nico, where I was reminded of a few conversations we had on the show, and the one that you always reference about the one with your friend that's basically, you know, honey badger, don't give AF. And if you live in a totalitarian country and you're concerned about the the state of your country then you want to hold Bitcoin. And I think we're seeing this play out in real time and kind of connecting this to the beginning. We're seeing that the, you know, the pendulum is swinging and people are realizing, oh my God, if all my money is in the legacy traditional financial system, I need to find a way to get it out of that system. And of course, as we say here on the show all the time, Bitcoin is that escape hatch. And then on people buying the ETF, 
I, I say this all the time and, and people still kind of yell at us because we are self custody maxis and we try to push you guys towards what we think is the best way to take your Bitcoin into custody. Obviously it's taking it off exchanges. It is holding the keys for yourself. It's controlling your own money. As I said, there's only one way to truly be free and transact freely in today's world. And that is if you are actually using the Bitcoin network as designed, taking Bitcoin into custody. With all that being said, I totally understand why some people would want to hold a spot Bitcoin ETF, whether you're a high net worth individual and you just don't want to take your assets into custody. Totally get it. I mean, I'm not here to tell you what to do with your money. Everyone makes those decisions on yourselves or whether you have a lot of money in the legacy traditional financial system and you can't get it out without penalties or other risks. Like, I totally understand why people would want to own the spot Bitcoin ETF. Again, we consider it paper Bitcoin. We consider it captured Bitcoin. We consider it IOUs to your Bitcoin. But like Adam was saying, hopefully, as this starts to progress, people understand that, yeah, price exposure to Bitcoin is great. But if you really want to have freedom money, you need to take that Bitcoin into custody. You need to own the keys yourself. You need to transact on the Bitcoin network. But again, I totally understand that this doesn't just happen overnight. Of course, we beat the drum always, every single day, multiple times a day, that you want to hold the keys to your own Bitcoin. But I totally understand that there's a learning curve. And hopefully, as we were saying, hopefully when people get into the spot Bitcoin ETF, they start to go down the self-custody route and they understand what freedom money is. And we don't get into the paranoid tinfoil hat area where we end up with the idea that, hey, man, once they get into an ETF, they're going to get captured Bitcoin. It's never going to get out from there. And they 6102 their Bitcoin. Remember, Coinbase is custodying 90 plus percent of all the ETFs. So... When we talk about this, it's just about highlighting the concerns. Obviously, at times, maybe we are being a little pedantic here and, and we're being hyperbolic here. But this is a real concern here that if you aren't holding your own Bitcoin, it is not your Bitcoin. Bitcoin custody is nine. Out of the, Bitcoin custody is 10 tenths of the law. Holding your own property is paramount. It's the most important thing to be doing right now in a world where they want to stop you from transacting on the network if they don't like what you're doing. Bro, I mean... You definitely didn't use Zoomer words, bro. Like that was that was hey, some yeah. sophisticated language. I gotta opti. use some adult Yo, words that was sometimes. Like Eighty-five IQ language opti. Good job. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm holy, working on my rhetoric. Holy, I'm working on my cow. rhetoric. Holy cow. Point is Anyways, making opti smarter, man. This is this is hand. true. This Ooh. is true. Bars. Okay. Anyways, uh, at Brett alone. Uh, if you want some, uh, if you want some Bitcoin well merch. Uh, go follow him, Adam O'Brien, on Twitter first. Uh, I pulled it up on screen for our audio listeners at Adam O'Brien underscore. Go to Bitcoin Well, and uh, after you sign up to Bitcoin Well, tag Adam on Twitter, and, and maybe, maybe you have an opportunity to win some Bitcoin Well merch. Anyways, I do want to give a very, very special shout out to our sponsor, and of course, I'm talking about Orange Pill App. Stack friends who stack sats. Bitcoiners are going to be some of the most powerful, influential people in the next five to 10 years. So it's probably a good idea to stack friends who stack sats. Big, oh, the Orange Pill app is the Bitcoin social layer. You can download it right now on the iOS store or the Android store. You could scan the QR code or check the link in the video description as this clever filtration system that allows you to only connect with fellow Bitcoiners. Right. Or like minded individuals. Uh, you won't find any altcoiners on there. You won't find any people that are sending you messages like if you send me one Bitcoin, I'll send you two. It's really cool. And it also lets you know uh, Bitcoiners that are close to you. So if you're traveling, if you're moved to a new city and you don't know any Bitcoiners that are near you, uh, the Orange Pill app will literally tell you the Bitcoiners that are around you. Right. They also just announced their uh, dark version, their dark mode, uh, which is absolutely badass. I love dark mode maxi. I use it for everything. I think if you still use the white mode, I'm like, I question like, like what, what, what your eyes, they don't hurt. Uh, so it's really cool. I highly recommend checking out the orange pull app. I'm an advisor. Love the guys, love the app. Me and Opti are quite active on there. You'll see us in the simply Bitcoin orange pill app group chat, or you can send me a message directly. And I do take the time to answer each and every single one of you, even though that tends to just keep piling up. So it's taking a little bit longer than usual. Anyways, guys, download the orange pill app today. All right. Everybody, let's get to the culture. The Daily Culture. Beam 
Racks. I want to give a shout out to Kaboom Racks, the most trusted place to buy, sell, and host mining equipment. You can check out their racks. You could do so by scanning the QR code on your screen. It'll take you directly to their Telegram marketplace where you can connect with a member of their sales team. They're purchasing their products easy and transparent. You could also sell your mining equipment with them, access their vast network of domestic and international customers when you sell your mining equipment with Kaboom Racks. This is where I personally buy my Bitcoin mining ASICs. Scan the QR code or check the link in the video description. Opti, it's all yours, my friend. Yeah, sweet. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of do a bit block boom recap on the back end. We'll talk about Bitcoin well and then the great conversations that Adam and I had over the weekend and all the feedback you guys have been giving us. So we're oh, wow. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about all that on the back end. But Adam brought this video to us to to our attention. And, and there's a great comment in here. So we're going to start here. And this is where we will catapult from. So, Adam, uh, you were on Reddit or someone sent you this. And I'll just read the, the quote here. And it goes, apparently, you can't even withdraw your own money from a bank in Canada without being thoroughly interrogated. How is it any of their business what you do with your money? And then just on that note, you saw this comment. So we'll comment on that as well. Uh, Athelstan goes, RBC has a $1,000 daily limit withdrawals from ATM. Bull Bitcoin, no KYC purchases at Canada. Post office is 999.99 max daily. Ended today. Canada is fooked. So, Adam, Man. as a Canadian, uh, what do you what, what do you want to touch on this? What, what signal do you want to spread to the people out there? Yeah, man. I mean, this isn't news. This is like, this is the banks being the banks. It's so frustrating that we think our money is safe. We are told, put your money in the bank and it will be safe. What we are not told is, put your money in the bank and it will be safe as long as you do what they want you to do with your money and as long as you tell them what you are doing with your money. Um, on the note though, I'm happy you brought that up. Uh, Bitcoin Well is launching or has launched light accounts and cash vouchers today. And so a light account, if you go to our Twitter at the Bitcoin well, you can see the whole thread. There's a blog post um, just announced bitcoin.com slash blog. If you want to read that, um, a, a light account is an account with a with, with an email address, a username and a password. A fully verified account is a, uh, a Bitcoin well account with an email address, a phone number and a full identity verification. And so both light accounts and fully verified accounts can go into their account get a cash voucher QR code, go to any of our Bitcoin ATMs and then scan the cash voucher QR code, put money into the ATM and they will have a cash voucher in their Bitcoin well account. They'll be able to then redeem that account for Bitcoin um, at any time they like. And so some advantages there, I think that this is the benefit to having an ecosystem that we've kind of had. We're, we're, we're actually able to offer this. We're not exposed to the third parties. I mentioned earlier, like, there is one payment processor that's owned by one third of the banks in Canada that is used by every bank in the country. And they're starting to give people a hard time. They're starting to stop people from getting Bitcoin. The number one support uh, question that we get in Canada is, hey, uh, my e-transfer didn't go through. And our response is, can you call your bank and see what happened? Sure enough, you know, two or three hours later after they get off hold with their bank and they talk to their banker, it's, uh, oh yeah, the bank blocked the transaction. They're going to put it through now. And that's happening over and over and over again. As you guys know, we put recurring buy um, into a bill payment section in Canada. And so you're able to just send an automatic bill payment from your bank. Well, again, one third of the banks in Canada are starting to ask questions and disallow those options uh, from, from your Canadian bank account into Bitcoin Well to buy Bitcoin in self-custody. And so cash vouchers, there's no, there's, I mean, we, we are a neck to, to squeeze, I suppose they're going to lean on us um, if they want to. But at the end of the day, there are our ATMs. We can do with them what they want. We have the software that runs the ATMs. And so cash vouchers on the Bitcoin ATM meet the Bitcoin portal and you are able to mash the two. And so what the benefit there is, is it's a 3% funding fee for a cash voucher and then a 2% spread for a light um, account, which I think is, is very good. You know, you're able to preserve a little bit of privacy, which is, which is very, very positive. And uh, ultimately, I think you aren't exposed to the banks shutting that down. So BitcoinWell.com or go to at the Bitcoin Well on Twitter, see the thread, link to the blog post. And uh, in your app, you can you can now buy Bitcoin with a light account, which is uh, which is very, very exciting. And, and Adam, just to be clear, that's not just for Canada. That's also for the States. No, it's just in Canada. We only have an ATM okay. network in Canada. This is this is the biggest like 
the reason we're able to do this is because of the infrastructure that we own in Canada. And so the U S we're going to work hard and we're going to find every way possible. This is, a, this is, this is the mission, right? This is how you enable independence. We're like sitting here building these products that are taking payment and sending Bitcoin to self custody. It's like, awesome. This is maximum independence. And then half of that transaction is out of our control. The banking transaction is out of our control. And so our mission, we're sitting here thinking, how do we enable more independence? And we're looking around at our infrastructure and boom, we have a network of a couple hundred Bitcoin ATMs in Canada. We are able to use that cash infrastructure. And so it's exciting because the next phase to this is having recyclers, having the ability to, to receive, but also dispense cash. And so there is a world where your light account could be able to put money in to buy Bitcoin, then also take cash out to sell Bitcoin um, all through a light account or a fully verified account. So I think this infrastructure play in Canada is really good. We're gonna learn a lot here. And then once it's ready, just like we did with our rollout in the US, we're gonna we're gonna get it dialed in here in Canada. And then as the opportunities present themselves, we want to be able to bring full independence into the USA. And full independence means your bank won't block transactions. And I think that's the number one um, uh, kind of focus for us over the next kind of year is how do we make sure that our customers have maximum independence? Beautiful, beautiful. So Adam, a, a quick question, because you know this is this is like the, I think the, the question a lot of people in the audience have, and I've heard this before, right? There's so many different choices for, for on-ramps, like specifically Bitcoin on-ramps, and then there's the Bitcoin and crypto on-ramps, right? Why should people use Bitcoin well, right? So my perspective is it's the it, self-custody is a revolution, right? The, if you really want to change the system, it's self-custody and the Bitcoin well platform is self-custody by default. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, man. I think the difference between Bitcoin well and most crypto and or Bitcoin on ramps is that you don't have, everyone has the ability to self custody, but you're not forced to self custody. And so kind of like, like what I was saying earlier, like when you onboard your dad, someone who's, you know, a little bit older to a platform that allows self custody or who, sorry, who, who, who allows to custody their coins in that platform, the broker and the custodian are the same your dad is not going to put the work into self custody because he's going to do the same thing he does with the, with the ETF. He's going to buy Bitcoin, leave it on the platform and think, hurrah, I've got my Bitcoin, right? And we've seen now that platforms that are holding Bitcoin for customers uh, don't do a good job. And moreover, like again, the 6102 is, uh, if it were to happen, uh, I like to say when it happens, people will accuse me of being a, a fear monger. So I'll say if, if the government decides that economic spending is at an all time low and they have to seize assets in order to increase economic spending, um, you know, they effectively force people to sell their sound money to increase spending. Um, if that happens, and we're kind of hearing that language right now, they're going to take it from the custodians first. The custodians are the lowest hanging fruit to capture Bitcoin from people. And so if you combine those two things, you have a platform that allows for people to leave Bitcoin in there because it's easier. And I get it, man. It's hard running a self-custody business. It's hard running a platform that only allows for self-custody. This is the low time preference mission focused way though. And so that's kind of my first point is like, don't onboard your parents into something that has the potential to six. Like if you got two options, one has the potential to be exposed to a 6102 and one doesn't, it's pretty obvious which one is better, right? It's pretty obvious which one you want your dad or your grandpa or even your son and your daughter and your nephew and your niece to be using. You want the one not exposed to a 6102. But then second to that, we need support. This It is harder. It is more expensive. I saw someone in the chat, you're charging higher for a, a fee. Uh, or a higher fee for um, uh, for the cash vouchers. Yeah, we have to because it's incredibly expensive to to operate a business like this. And and at the end of the day, it's a value for value world. We need to do things um, profitably in order to maintain the business, in order to be able to develop products like this, in order to actually fulfill our mission of enabling independence. But rest assured, we are here to enable independence. That is our mission. Every single decision in Bitcoin Well is governed by enabling independence. And I don't take that lightly. And and like I saw someone in the chat talking about I'm a dad and I self custody. Good. Your dad needs to self custody. Your grandpa needs to self custody. And then you need to teach your kids how to self custody. Because guys, 
we are like halfway through. Like I'm a, I'm a fairly uh, young dad. Um, I've got kids that are kind of like, you know, seven and, and younger. And, and my kids are like, my oldest son is, is halfway to like 15. And when he's 15, like what I've taught him is it, that's it. I have no more teaching opportunity. I, of course I have, um, I have the ability to be his friend and to teach him when he's older than 15, but the forced authority that I currently have is, is gone at 15. And we need to hold such a high standard to our actions so that the future generation does not get caught in the high time preference garbage that our generation and the generation before us has kind of trapped us into. When you're mission focused, like my mission here at Bitcoin Well is literally, I wake up this morning and my daughter comes in. I haven't seen her all weekend. I got in late last night. She comes in my room. She goes, daddy, big hug, hug and a kiss, tells me all about her dance competition, like that's who I'm working for. We need to enable independence for that generation. And then I think about 30 years down the road when she's going to have a kid who needs that independence. And I don't know if you guys know this, but independence is not given, it's taken. And we need to do the work. We need to make the actions, take the actions to actually self-custody. And so whether or not you use yourself, um, uh, a self-custody by default platform, it's automatic self-custody platform, like onboard the people that need it to automatic self-custody, do the work with them. And then like, tell us how to make it easier, help us do that. And then lastly, and I'll put a little bit of heat on the audience here. Like why are you supporting someone that supports 6102? Why are you supporting someone that supports, you know, broker and custodian being aligned? Um, we need to disalign broker and custodian. If you need to use a custodian, do it. Use nunchuck, use someone that doesn't uh, um, broker that doesn't sell the coins, the broker and the custodian need to separate. Otherwise the incentives are too messed up. We need to look at the incentives, Nico, that's your catchphrase. Look at the incentives and allow for self custody, automatic self custody, not only just automatic, like only option self custody. There's no other way to buy Bitcoin at Bitcoin. Well, and there's, and there's, you know, like the, like the chat mentioned, you know, bull Bitcoin and Bitcoin well in Canada, both non-custodial, both doing this way. But the only option in the USA is Bitcoin well for automatic self-custody. I hope that we inspire comp competition. I love competition. As long as it's mission focused, we got to work together and we got to enable independence uh, as much as possible and as fast as possible. So that's kind of like that maybe went on a little bit ranty. Um, no, not at all, absolutely dude. Absolutely need to enable independence. Not at all. And, and this is exactly precisely why I say in the beginning of the show that it aligns with the Simply Bitcoin ethos of the separation of money and state. Like, guys, there's two ways to look at this industry. You look at it from the I want to get rich. And I think a lot of us, you know, the incentive structure is there where initially you're like, you come for the money, you save for the revolution. But the awesome part about this revolution, unlike this, like the separation of church and state and all these things that have happened before, is that this is not kinetic this is so far. Uh, this is a this is kind of like an information uh, narrative trench warfare. And all you got to do to be a revolutionary is literally take self custody, right? And you know, I I think I, I came to this realization many many months ago, and Adam, I'm pretty sure I've told you this story, but. Basically, I'm like the IT team for my entire family. I'm like the Bitcoin guy. And, you know, what I've come to realize is that, like, you know, it, 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 human beings are creatures of convenience. And if it's a situation where, you know, of course, they want to benefit from number go up, but the right incentive structure is not there for them to learn, like, if you can make a sandwich, if you could take care of a baby, like you can write down like 12 words, like literally. And there's so many good options nowadays um, in, in terms of open source wallets, uh, hardware devices, obviously Passport with Envoy is absolutely amazing and delicious and easy to use. Uh, so it's like you, you have no excuse. Like you have collaborative custody, you have nunchuck, right? Like there, there's so many, there's so many different tools that make it incredibly easy. Uh, this wasn't, this didn't exist like, you know, five years ago uh, or, you know, eight years ago, like in the very beginning of Bitcoin, like none of this existed, none of this infrastructure, none of this technology, none of these, none of these entrepreneurs that developed these hardware devices, none of these wallets. And it was actually like, like somewhat technically difficult. Like now is the easiest time. And I bet you five years from now, 
clever entrepreneurs are going to find even easier ways, right? But it's incredibly important to, uh, in my opinion, to support uh, the, the revolution, and the revolution is self custody, right? So, can you make my computer faster? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, and this is why, you know, this is why I personally love Bitcoin well because it's it's self custody by default, right? And we have to support the uh, uh, platforms that you know m have the right in incentive structure in place for people to perhaps not do the convenient thing. Uh, convenience doesn't win revolutions, right? Uh, you totally have to not. take and some action and agency in the, like, in the process. And part of that is, this is why we need, you know, like this is why we partner with you guys and, and why I'm so stoked to be working with, with your audience and your customers is I've gotten to work with dozens of the Simply Bitcoin audience who's giving me feedback. We can make the product better, but like we have to think about just Look at the U.S. market as a whole and the options that they've had to buy Bitcoin. One of the problems with self-custody by default is that we are exposed to, to fraud through the ACH platform. And so we have to, uh, a, a big a big important thing to me is that when you buy Bitcoin, you get Bitcoin, like on the blockchain. Like that's just, that's just how it needs to be. And so everyone who buys Bitcoin right now at, at, at other platforms in the USA, if you have instant exposure to Bitcoin, you are not able to withdraw the Bitcoin because the money hasn't hasn't landed. It's 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 not a it's not a healthy way to be able to allow that. And so I massively discounted how important people wanted to just like push the button and smash buy, and more how they were conditioned and trained that they could just smash you know hit the button and smash buy from money in their bank, even though it takes you know two or three days for the bank to move the money. And so right now we are actively like within. I'll say days, the team will kill me and they'll want me to say weeks, but within days, you will be able to self or you'll be able to have price exposure at bitcoinwell.com. Uh, while we wait for that money to clear, it will be a pending withdrawal state and we will then broadcast the transaction once the money clears. And so this is why like the Canadian and the, and the American market are so different in Canada. We have this, this payment rail as centralized as it is. That is fairly instantaneous. You can go from, from your bank to Bitcoin on the blockchain. I've done it in nine seconds. Bank to Bitcoin on the blockchain in nine seconds. That same payment rail doesn't exist in Canada. And admittedly, I discounted how important it was to be able to go from you know bank to at least price exposure in, in you know nine seconds. But at the end of the day, we will allow you to go from bank to price exposure to real Bitcoin. There will just be steps in the middle. The important thing here is that at no point in time are your coins ever left on the platform. Your coins need to go. Their end state, when the transaction is finished, they need to be in your wallet. Otherwise, you are exposed to all kinds of bad things. And guys, you have zero benefits. There is literally no benefit, absolutely zero, to holding coins on an exchange. It's like, I, I just, I fail to see where and how um, this, this complacency and this desire to leave our coins in somebody else, our value, our wealth in somebody else's hands, uh, came to be. So it's truly our mission to enable independence and to actually make it possible. And now, you know, we're excited in Canada. If you're Canadian watching the show, you know, smash like hit us up, go to at the Bitcoin well on Twitter, use cash vouchers and give us that same feedback. We need this feedback so we can make better products. And, and you guys know, I got thick skin. I've been, I've been talking about Bitcoin for 11 years. And when you're talking about Bitcoin for 11 years, you got people to call you some crazy things. <laughs> and so no one, nobody has said something that, that is going to offend me. You guys won't do it. Be honest, be true. Let me know what's going on and we're going to make it better. And this will be, this is what's so exciting about technology and about deflationary technology like Bitcoin and the Bitcoin well. This will be the hardest it ever is to self custody. It's only going to get easier, but it will only get easier. It'll get easier faster if you support companies that are automatic self custody and if you reach out to companies that want feedback for automatic self custody. Frankly, like if you really don't like me or you don't like the company, whatever, that's fine. Go use a platform that allows you to self custody by default and give them your feedback so that I can look at them and what they're doing, be like, yo, that's a good idea we should implement. And this is how the free market thrives is that we work in competition with each other 
to provide the best possible value for the lowest marketable price. And this is the Bitcoin well way. This is the mission to enable independence. And uh, yeah, go do it. Love Beautiful. it. I Love completely it. agree. I, Guys, go to bitcoinwell.com. Wait, Nika, Nika is going to try to wrap this up. We're not going to let, we're not going to wrap it up yet, Nika. Sorry. I, I don't want to. Go to, to bitcoinwell.com <laughs> slash BT. Dude, don't even say it. Don't even say it. <laughs> uh, I do, I do want to touch on something. And, and we were having this conversation all, all weekend. You know, we shared a house in, in Dallas. Uh, I hung out with a uh, Canadian Opti and, and Joe, you know, the programmer, part of the Bitcoin Well team. And you guys kept beating on a simple message. You're like, look, we love the feedback from the audience. Continue to give us feedback. Continue to, you know, rip Adam a new one because every two weeks we're going to keep updating the Bitcoin Well platform and make it the best Bitcoin exchange that we can in the U.S. So touch on that a little bit, Adam, and then I, I think uh, Nico is trying to wrap up. Yeah, man. I mean, thank you very much, American James. Shout out, James. <laughs> <laughs> we have this joke that, uh, well, we can go into that another time. It's like the feedback that we get um, gets actioned immediately and action doesn't mean built immediately, but it means put together with all of the other feedback. And so you guys told us overwhelmingly, yo, I want to deposit money and I want instant price exposure. I need to get rid of this fiat as soon as possible. And I'm like talking to them and I'm like, guys, you can't get a blockchain. Like you, like you just can't get a TX ID that fast. It doesn't work because the money doesn't actually hit our, our bank account for like two or three days afterwards. And they said, that's fine. Just as long as I get it eventually, as long as once the money's cleared, I get the Bitcoin, I want to have the opportunity, the option to get price exposure instantly. And so that's what we're doing. And, and that little piece of feedback is going to help us hopefully serve more users, help more users get that instant price exposure and the self-custody experience, and then give us more funds, give us more capability. You know, guys, we, you guys know we make 1% on every transaction. And so it's not a huge volume. It's not a massive uh, spread that we have to play with. We need scale. We need more people using it. And the more people that use it, the more feedback that comes. We tighten up that feedback loop. You know, when there's 10 people using the platform, we have a bit of a longer feedback loop. When there's 100 people using that feed or that the platform, we have a shorter feedback loop. More feedback in a shorter amount of time means more effort uh, and means more, more effort in the right direction, which means the platform gets better, which means more feedback, which means a shortened feedback loop. And the whole thing compounds into uh, an incredible place for people to buy and sell Bitcoin directly to and from their self custody. And so, yeah, man, like keep it up, hit us up on Twitter, do it publicly if you want to. And if you think I'm like, you know, like I love being called out so much because it gives me an opportunity to improve. I'm like pretty confident um, and, and um, grounded in my mission. And everything is done through a mission to enable independence. We see some of these business leaders who are not mission focused. They're not authentic. And they get threatened at the sense of feedback, but like I am, I am, you know, friendly and, and in some cases friends with lots of my competitors. Uh, one of our like board members now and, and, uh, incredible advisor to the company, we were direct competitors in the exact same market at the same time, but we've always been friendly competitors. We grew together. We pushed each other to be better. And now Look at us. We're we're working together to make uh, independence and uh, and Bitcoin self custody possible. So it's important to to give feedback and and take this outside of just your Bitcoin life. Like the platforms that you like, the the systems that you enjoy using, offer feedback to the entrepreneurs. And if that entrepreneur doesn't want your feedback, find a new platform because it won't survive. It's not mission focused. When you're mission focused instead of ego focused, the feedback is positive. When you're ego focused your ego gets bruised and you're not able to accept that feedback. And so I just hit me with the feedback, be as blunt as you want. It's all good. And uh, let's make Bitcoin well the number one place to buy Bitcoin in the USA and in Canada and across other continents as we're able to expand out. You love it. Love it. Beautiful. Wait, wait, Nika. Sorry. I, I remind, I was remembered of something. Uh, Adam, you did want to do a call out live on the show about freedom maxing and breaking the echo chamber. You want to do this now before we wrap the show up about what, uh, the, the, the conference thing, I am blanking on what it is. Uh, you tweeted out to that one guy, oh, yeah, 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 Ryan Panita. Okay. So check this out. So, um, before we wrap the show pinned to the top of my Twitter profile is a tweet 
to uh, Ryan Panita. Ryan Panita is a business influencer. He's got a lot of successful businesses. Um, and he has one of his businesses is called the Wealthy Kingdom. And uh, they are a, a, a organization dedicated to Christian entrepreneurs. I want to orange pill the church. Bitcoin is a biblical asset. And I think the church needs Bitcoin more than anyone right now. They're hosting a, a thing called Kingdom Summit. And I want to go to Kingdom Summit and, uh, and, and talk about Bitcoin, orange pill the church. And so if you think that's a valuable mission that, that resonates with you, top of my Twitter profile is, is the tweet. Go repost it. Go tweet Ryan Panita. Um, hit him up. He's popular, uh, more popular on Instagram than he's on Twitter. Hit him up on Instagram and say, Adam O'Brien wants to talk, needs to talk at the Kingdom Summit about Bitcoin as a biblical asset. That would be very, very appreciated. Um, so yeah, simple CTA there. Go to the top of my Twitter and, uh, and, and retweet. Uh, or repost the uh, the post to Ryan Pita. Beautiful, beautiful guys. Go to bitcoinwell.com slash simply bitcoin. Go follow follow Adam at Adam O'Brien underscore on Twitter. Adam, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I appreciate it. For real, for real. No cap. That's what's up. This was straight bussin'. Gas, boys, gas. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, this was the Simply a Bitcoin episode for April 15th, 2024. I'm your host, Nico. It's my legendary co-host, Optimus Feels, our awesome guest, Adam O'Brien. And uh, guys, love you all. We'll be back tomorrow for a brand new episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put Adam on the spot right now. Adam, I will be out Thursday and Friday. Do you wanna do you wanna fill in the co-host uh, oh. spot with Opti? The co-host seat, yeah. On one man, of those let's days. Fr Thursday, Friday, which one? Uh, which one? Yeah, let's go. Let's go Friday, man. All Friday. Let's, let's, let's end the week with uh, Adam Opti show. That is, this could get out of. Are you sure, bro? This could get a little out of hand. As long as you don't get us banned, we're good. Uh, but no yes, problems. you pick the meme. <laughs> you pick the meme review. All right, sweet. All right, so uh, Adam will be co-hosting with Opti on Friday while I'm in Nashville. And uh, love you all, guy. Love you, everyone. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow for a new episode. Here we go was brought to you by bitcoinwell.com a bitcoin only platform on a mission to enable financial independence <laughs>